Hello and welcome back. I'm Keetron Evans and I'm gonna show you privilege escalation via cross-site scripting. Now, this is one of my absolute favorite labs in our new cyber range because for one, it maps to the MITRE attack framework as all of our labs do, but it also gives you a chance to explore a way of committing or creating privilege escalation that's not commonly shown. When we think of privilege escalation in the world of pen testing and hacking, we're mostly talking about privilege escalation through some operating system vulnerability or some local vulnerability in a piece of software, something like that. But rarely do you get a chance to take a peek at what it looks like from the standpoint of a web application exploit like cross-site scripting. So let's dive into it and just take a slight peek in it. I want to pique your interest and hopefully encourage you to go over and take a look at this lab and play with it on your own. So let's go ahead and start it up. And as you can see, as is the case with all of our labs, they start up almost instantly. So they're, um, they're very fast and very nimble in how they operate. So the first step here, and I kind of want to showcase the range more uh, as well, is when we get ready to start, if you're not sure how to do some of what it's asking here, in this case, it's saying in this lab, we will look at a different method of escalating privileges. Um, we're, we're saying we're going to do that says to get started, open a web browser on the Kali Linux machine and navigate to XSSable colon 5000. It's telling us to go to that port. So if I were to follow those instructions, I'm just gonna simply open my browser here and you can open Firefox a bunch of different ways. I know for some of you that may be newer uh, to Linux and to Kali, you might be like, well, how do I start Firefox? So you could actually do that from just going to the Kali icon and going to web browser and it would start Firefox. Or alternatively, you could just go to open a prompt, a terminal and just type Firefox and you would get there as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the link that it asked us to go to here. And we'll just write over the one that's there already. So we get there and it tells us, hey, our username is student and our password is student. So we will simply log in as student and student. And we get logged in. So one of the things that's important is if you notice, it actually gives us this little green check mark here to let you know that you've completed the exercise. And that's one of the great things about our range is it won't give you that green check mark until you completed all the steps, but it does give it to you frequently enough to where you can see where you're making progress. Another really useful thing is if you need help, for example, you can click on need a hint here and it gives you information about what it is you're doing and what you might need to do differently to get the lab to do what it's supposed to do. Now, since we've completed the step, we've got our green check mark. I'm just gonna go ahead and do next. And next it says users. Let's take a look around, click the users button at the top of the right and then on the user to view all public posts they have made. Connie has made a private post that we're not able to see at the moment. Our goal will be to find a way to view this post. Fortunately for us, Connie compulsively checks blogs for new posts. Even more fortunately, cross-site scripting protection um, seems to have never been a concern for this web application. So let's test out what we can do with cross-site scripting by making a post, click my blog, and then add a post. Let's test for cross-site scripting vulnerabilities with the basic alert test and the following line to the body. We're gonna add this line and pick the title of your choice. Now, something I wanna point out here that's very, very uh, different about this range. Notice how we give you an entire scenario. You're not just going through doing exercises. We've actually taken the time to put in there the scenario and explain exactly what you're doing and how contextually it would fit into an actual attack like this. And this is much more conducive for learning than just blindly going through steps without having any clue as to what you're going through those steps for. So we're gonna do what it says. We're going to um, basically go and click on my blog, all right? And we can see where our stuff is here. We can also add a post. So I'm just gonna click add blog post. And then it says in your blog post here, you wanna add this particular string. It says, 
add the following line to the body and then pick a title of your choice. Now, we don't have to put it, you know, we can pick where we wanna put it. And it tells us here, if I go to Nita Hen, it says an alert XSS is one of the most basic forms of reflected cross-site scripting. Because of how common it is, it's often most filtered as well. In other words, yes, you can use this to check. However, uh, it's something that is more commonly done out there. So we can take this and put it in uh, to our string here. And you can copy and paste this like I did there and then put it right in. And then basically from that point, what you're gonna do is just submit that. All right, now I want you to notice something. When I hit submit, notice nothing happened. But even though we read the hint, notice it's actually interactively giving us hints up here in real time. As you do it, it says, look, pl please fill out the field. What did I forget to do there? It says you must enter a title of your choice before you can go on. So I'm just gonna put in there Keytron XSS, and then I'll hit submit again. And then notice it actually posted it and it gave me the green thumb or the green check mark and it moves on to the next step. Now that means that we were able to successfully post this and we've got some cross-site scripting added there and what we're really going to be testing here is when someone else comes and views this, what's going to happen to them. So we're going to go on the next to the third step here. And it says at a quick glance, nothing seemed to have changed. However, let's take a closer look before assuming that cross-site scripting is impossible. Right click on the page and select view source here near the bottom of the page. And we can see what we actually have there. So if I do that and I go to view page source, now you can actually see that our string did get added there. So this looks exactly like a cross-site script in a tap that we made, except the word alert was filtered out because of filters and other security things that you would see in these types of, if there were like a web application firewall or something like that. So let's be a little more creative with our cross-site scripting attempt and use a remote script rather than placing the code directly in the post. And we can do this a lot of different ways. Uh, this is, uh, you know, I've used iframes and other techniques for doing things like this. So we go ahead and go to next. All right, it says loading a remote script. It says if the alert tag is being filtered, we can try to evade this by loading a remote script. It says here, we'll include remote script tags. The JavaScript will then reach out to a web server that's somewhere else pull this in and then actually execute that, all right? So it says to do this first, we must create a new post with our upload, uh, you know, the button that we can actually post the script and create the post and add to the body the script tag that we see here. So what that means is you need to go back to where we were. So let's just go to need a hint here. It says don't forget to swap out your Cali machine's IP address, all right? So we're gonna go back to our blog here and we're gonna add a post and we're just gonna call it Keytron2 in this case. All right, and then we can go ahead and to our body, we, will, we can add again what we copied here. And remember, it says there, remind yourself that you're supposed to change it to your Cali IP. Now, how do you know your Cali IP? If you don't remember that, you can ask for help or you can go up and just open a terminal and do IPA and get your IP. And in my case, it's 172.20.24, looks like 38 there. So I'm just gonna go right here, change that. 172.20, and oops, I covered it up. 24.38. So we go ahead and enter that in as the IP address because that's our actual Cali IP. And what we're doing here is we're simulating going out to a server out on the internet somewhere and we're just pulling it from our own server just for you to see what the exercise looks like. So now that we've done that, we go ahead and submit. And it pulled it over and the reason you know that is for a couple of reasons. One, we get our green check mark and that green check mark, I wanna take the time to point out, it's not just looking at what commands you entered. It's also looking at the state of the actual machine 
to tell if what you did caused the desired reaction on the back end machine. And this is another thing that makes it really great and powerful as a learning tool for you to be able to learn how to do these things. So it says, all right, we've done this now as before. If we choose a title, submit it, it's going to actually go ahead and pull it over and put the script there. Next steps, we'll do this to complete the cross site scripting. So we go to the next step. It says create the script. And this is where we're basically going to have to set up the server. So it says in order for this to pull the script from the Kali machine, we'll need to create a host to, uh, for the script. Open the terminal and navigate to the XSS directory located in root XSS. Now, again, if those instructions are a little bit complex for you, you can go to need a hint and get some more information on how to do that. Or if you know how to do it, you can just open a terminal and follow the instructions and simply navigate to that directory root XSS like so. And you've completed that step. And then it says, once you get there, you'll need to create a file named XSS.js and create this file and fill it with this script right here, that information. So I go ahead and copy that. Uh, I'll use nano because it doesn't tell us that we have to use a specific text editor. We've used Vim before in some of the other exercises, but I'll just use uh, nano in this case, and I'll create the file that it asks us for named xss.js. And this again is another example of where the, the range is not trying to dictate exactly how you do something. It's really making sure that you understand it well enough to get to the desired end result. All right, so we've created that file. We put the alert script in there. Now it says this will serve as a test to make sure we can bypass the filter. Save the file. Next, we'll need to host the file so that the remote script can find it. This is as simple as a single line in Python. And what we're saying here is you can actually launch a web mini web server in Python with this line here. So we're going to run this command from the same directory that we're actually in. And it points that out in the instructions here. So we go ahead and paste it and we run it. And now we have an HTTP server running and waiting. And as you can see, we got our little green thumb up there to let us know, our green check mark to let us know that we uh, got that completed successfully. So last, we're gonna navigate back to the web application and refresh, refresh the page containing the post. If everything's gone correctly, we should have been greeted with an alert message. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's go back to our post page and we'll just refresh that. All right, so we can see our refresh page there and we can see our message and it says, great, we've got that done. Now we move on. Now that we've confirmed that it's possible, we can weaponize it. We can modify the JS file to basically include or do anything that we want. So in this way, our admin user views the blog, posts with their XSS cookies and it will be sent to us. And then we can use that to steal their session, which allows us, if it's an admin, to actually elevate privileges to admin just via this web form. We didn't have to hack the box and get system privilege or anything like that. Just via this web form, we can do that. So basically what we're doing is we need to just modify our little uh, script once more. So let's go ahead and open our terminal here. and we'll navigate back to our directory. Our cross site scripting directory. And remember, look in there, there's our script. So we're just gonna edit that with nano. And all we're gonna do is just take this line and we're gonna replace what's in the script or in the file with this line. So we come over I get rid of what's there. We're simply going to paste in what we copied from over here to the left. And remember, you want to we have to replace the IP address here with our actual Cali IP. And let me just make this a little bit bigger so we can all see it a little bit better. And that's going to be 172. 20, 24, 38, I believe. 
Now, if you're like me and you got as and you get old, you're getting older and you got bad memories, you might need to double check that IP. So I'm just going to open another terminal here and check it. And I can see that it is 172.20.24.38. I've got that right. So now I can close a terminal. And this is one of the other things I like about our new range is it doesn't limit you to being linear. You can operate how you operate for real and check yourself here. So we go ahead and save the script. All right? says we completed that task, we've successfully weaponized it, and then we go to the very last step, which is switching users. So every minute or so an admin will log in and check all posts, right? Because this is what admins do to make sure that nobody's posting something inappropriate or whatever the case may be. So at some point, that admin is going to log in here and see that post, and just from seeing that post, it should cause something to happen. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, we can use a new cookie to log in as the admin if we want. So we can right click inspect element, then click on the storage tab, double click and do all these other things. So to finish this lab, write out the secret code to temp code. All right, and we can actually do this here. We can say echo and use that to do it. And again, if you're lost, you can go need a hint and actually see what it is you're supposed to do here. Now we're at the very last step. Uh, it's a very simple step, but I want you to do this with me. Go over right now, right this second, go over, work through this lab, get up to this point and see if you can get yourself through it. And I think you'll be rewarded in understanding now how we can use something as simple as cross-site scripting to do privilege escalation. And the broader reason this is important is oftentimes when you run vulnerability scans, burp suite and things, cross-site scripting will be rated as a medium and sometimes a low, but this clearly shows, given the right context, it could be a critical vulnerability. Thank you for watching. And if you want to do exercises just like what I just showed you uh, on your own and practice and get good with it and see how these all map to the MITRE ATT&CK framework, then head on over to infosecinstitute.com slash range and practice with it and set up an account and you can do exactly what you just saw me do. Thanks for watching.